Do you struggle with procrastinating? Do you get easily distracted and can't focus for a long time on your studies? Then this video is for you. Hello everyone, my name is Andy So. I am a UCT medical student and today I'm going to be sharing you tips on how to stop procrastinating and increase your productivity. On this channel, I share my life as a UCT medical student and I also post study tips videos weekly. So if you are interested in that kind of content, please be sure to click the subscribe button. There are several reasons why people procrastinate. It's either they are lazy or demotivated, they haven't developed a proper study routine, they get easily distracted when they are studying and end up doing something else instead of being productive, or they think they have more than enough time to do the work later. If you are one of those people who struggle with procrastinating, today I'm going to be giving you tips and tricks on how to stop procrastinating and increase your productivity. If you want to know how I study for long hours without using focus, make sure you watch up until the end of the video because I'm going to be sharing you the tips that I use to study for longer. As long as you haven't planned studying ahead, studying will always feel like an option so every day you wake up and you have no study plan it is easier for you to decide whether to study or not to study at all so that is why it is important for you to develop a study routine so i've shared with you how i developed a study routine that made me a top achiever in metric in one of my videos please do watch it to get an idea of how i developed an effective study routine so I'm just going to share with you why is a study routine so important. First of all, having a study routine means that you have your study time. And that means you have a set time to study and it doesn't feel like an option whether you should do your work or not. It also means that you have a set study place. A good study place is a place where there are no distractions and a place that is study friendly. So it is very important that you pick a place that motivates you to study and you are able to be productive without any distractions. Developing a study routine also means that you assign time for a certain activity and you follow that time. And you can only do that if you have a timetable. A study timetable tells you what you are supposed to be studying on that day, for how long and what time you should be studying it. And this gives you a guide on how your day should be going. So if you do not have a study timetable, you will wake up and think what subjects you should be studying today or what you should be doing. And that makes you start studying very late and you find that you've wasted most of your day. Or you end up finding it difficult to know which subject to study to a point where you just start some work and leave it halfway because you don't feel like it anymore and start some other work and leaving it halfway. At the end of the day, you find that you haven't completed anything. So in order for you to have an effective study routine, you have to be consistent. So I advise you to set reminders on when you should be doing a certain task. Have a study buddy or a friend to keep you accountable. Most of the time, it is hard for us to be productive because we do not plan to be productive on that day. We just decide on that specific day that, oh my God, I have schoolwork to do. Which one should I do first? But if you actually plan ahead on what work you should be doing and distribute your work evenly across the weeks, you will not face any problems when it comes to procrastinating and you'll be able to save so much time because you'll give yourself enough time to rest and enough time to do your work instead of leaving your work up to the last minute and then you end up overworking yourself. So following a study timetable, it is something that is not easy to do. I myself sometimes find it hard to do stuff the specific time I have set myself to do the stuff. Because honestly speaking, you can't predict what will happen next Friday. And now in your timetable, you have next Friday already planned. You've already decided that at one o'clock you want to be studying this subject and you're going to be finishing at three. And sometimes it doesn't happen that way. And that could be so demotivating and you find yourself end up not doing that work that you've set for that time because you're thinking already the time that I've set to do this thing has passed. 
so i can not do it now because now i have to be doing it that's other thing that i have set for that time so now it's just like a domino effect of you being behind the whole entire week i am going to be giving you this useful trick that helped me still stay productive during that day, even if I couldn't follow my timetable. So what I did was I wrote down all the goals that I would like to achieve for that day. So I'll write down, I wanna finish this certain topic. I wanna start this assignment. I wanna do three of these homeworks. I wanna read up on this topic. I wanna watch this YouTube video. I would literally just have a list of all the stuff that I wanna achieve that day. And those same stuff, would be on my timetable but the difference is that on my timetable i have a certain time when i should do this stuff so now if it happens that time comes and i can't do that activity in my mind i know that before i go to bed i have to finish this work another reason why it is so helpful to not assign time for the tasks that you want to do for the day it is because if my timetable says at two i should be studying this subject and i definitely don't feel like studying that subject at two i feel like studying it later that night so you can actually play around it because now you just have a list of stuff that you need to do and you just want to look at it and decide which one do i want to do first if you're a person who struggles to follow a timetable this method is going to be useful to you let's say you have developed a study routine you do have the motivation to study but you can't concentrate for a long time to get work done that might be because you are facing a lot of distractions while you're studying or you have a boring study material and you do not take breaks in your study sessions. The biggest enemy to your studies is social media. You might be thinking that you are only scrolling 15 minutes on TikTok, but you are actually spending an hour. I'm going to be sharing with you how to eliminate distractions from your phone. If you know yourself that you are addicted to social media, delete it you have to delete that app especially if you know exactly that you spend hours and hours on tiktok without studying even if it's instagram or whatsapp do delete that app if it's giving you a lot of problems if you are a person who's not addicted you can control yourself but you find yourself spending more time on that app than planned turn off your notifications so that you go to that specific app when you are actually taking a break or when you are actually intending to. The second thing you can do if you have another device you can do your work in, either it is a laptop or an iPad, use it instead of your phone and make sure that on that device you have closed all the other tabs all the Facebooks, the social medias, the Netflix and all of that and only the tab that you are using to do your work is open. Leave your phone far away from your desk so that every time you want to use your phone you actually have to stand up from your desk, go and fetch it. That eliminates spending unnecessary time on your phone just because it is on your desk. So if you're a person who uses their phone to do schoolwork, there's an app that you can use to lock other apps, such as your social media apps or your gaming apps for your study duration. I'll paste a list on the screen of the number of apps that are able to block other apps. You can simply download one and lock all your apps that disturb you whenever you want to study. Another reason why you spend long hours on your study desk but still don't get that much work done, it's because you have boring study material. So try to find a study material that you can interact with, for example, a YouTube video. And when you make your notes, make sure that they are appealing to you to read. Either you're a person who loves colors or you're a person who loves drawing. Make sure that your notes are entertaining for you to read. You can make the use of flashcards as well to keep your study session fun. So now we've come towards the end of the video where I share with you how to study for long hours without losing focus. So the first thing I do is pick the time when I feel like my brain is the most active and when I feel most energetic and ready to do work. The second thing that can set a good tone to your study session 
is starting with your favorite subjects or the tasks that you feel like they are so much easy to do i know most of the times when we are starting to be productive we think we should start with the difficult work first and leave the easy work later actually you should be doing it the other way around start with the easy work first so that when you get to the hard part of your study session you've already been so productive that you're already pumped up to get through the study session because if you start with something that is so challenging and so hard and you end up spending half of your study session trying to figure out and when you get to the easy stuff you can barely even enjoy it or you are so demotivated to even do it and the third tip is knowing when to take breaks so our brains have different attention span you should count how long it takes for you to lose focus when you are doing your work by simply using a timer when you start studying time yourself up until the time where you are distracted or you are just looking at your work and nothing is getting in during that time and that will be your concentration span if your concentration span is 25 minutes long take a break every after 25 minutes in your study session you can take breaks for between 5 to 10 minutes and find something else to do either you are walking outside or grabbing coffee so that you can refresh your mind for your next study session and honestly that helps me study for longer hours because i am giving my brain breaks in between so we've come to the end of the video if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel i'll see you again on another video bye